Hey everybody, welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Sid, I am a computer science major at Georgia Tech, and today I'm gonna to be talking about all the tech that I wanna learn in 2023. Yes, I did yoink this idea from Ben Awad, and I've been yoinking it for two years, so if you wanna go check out my 2022 and 2021 videos, I'll leave links to those in the description, but let's just get straight into it. So first of all, let's talk about the tech that I actually used in 2022, and I did quite a lot because I wanted to like dip my feet into a lot of things and just learn a lot about a bunch of different things. And the first thing I really learned was Go. And I spent some time just like playing around building some web apps in Go. I thought it was fun. And then I kind of like left Go on the back burner for a bit. I learned some Rust. I learned the basic syntax of Rust sometime during the year. And I also built out like a few crappy projects. One was like an incomplete regex parser, but that taught me a lot. And I also did some advent of code problems in Rust. And I felt pretty comfortable with the basic syntax. And I thought it was pretty good. And I'm gonna revisit both Go and Rust in 2023, but we'll talk about that in just a bit. I also used a lot of Python. I mean, Python's basically my main language. I use it for everything. I had to use it for my internship, specifically Flask. Um, so I just got a lot of Python experience under my belt. It's very nice, very easy to get like APIs up and running really quickly. I'll probably use it again at some point during this year. I also uh, learned Next.js. I've just been using plain old React. Um, and then I watched like, Theo T3 Ping GG, you know, you know who I'm talking about. I watched this video where he talked about um, stop using create create React app. And since I don't really know anything about web development, I'll just take other people's opinions and make them my own. So now I will also tell you to stop using create React app and instead do some server side rendering with Next.js. But I really have had a lot of fun using Next.js. It's made it really easy to do everything. I noticed the apps are a little bit faster and then deploying things on Vercel is obviously really easy because they made Next.js. So you just click one button and boom, you just push to Git and everything is done, hosted for you, really easy. Also because of Theo, I've been using Prisma, uh, which is, uh, I've been using Prisma for like uh, storing data stuff and just being like an adapter in between my actual API and uh, just sending data over to Prisma and then getting data back from Prisma. I haven't really used much of it though, um, but it's really just a step over using Firebase I'm not super great with uh, database stuff. So I'm gonna have to learn a lot more about Prisma this year because I only used it for one project. And again, I'm a computer science major. So I'm really just trying to learn as much as I can besides just you know making the standard Next.js app that's just local host and not in production. So I wanna learn more about Prisma, but as far as I could tell, using it in a Next.js app was really easy and really fun. Tailwind, I've been using Tailwind to style uh, a little bit. I'm not super great at styling things. I'm not a very good designer, but it's been nice. I've just been looking at the docs and copy pasting class names that I think are interesting. And when I'm too tired to copy paste, I'll turn on GitHub Copilot and it will write the class names for me if I'm being completely honest, because I really don't like styling, but I've been getting a sense of actually what to do with Tailwind. So I wanna use it a little bit more so I don't have to be reliant on Copilot and can more accurately out, uh, edit what Copilot outputs. Because at the end of the day, Copilot is great. I use it to write a decent amount of my Python code because I know Python really well and I can edit it when it spits out responses, but it's sped my productivity up by a lot. So if you're thinking about using Copilot for a language that you're already good in, do it. If it's a language you're learning, don't do it. All right, finally, you can move on to what I want to learn in 2023. I want to learn uh, another front end framework, library framework. Uh, I've been using React and I really haven't had problems with it in Next.js, but I want to try and learn something new. So I'll learn like one of Svelte, Solid, or Remix. I actually used Solid for like one small project last year where I did a lyric generator for Kanye songs, which has aged poorly. That's aged very poorly, but that was like a go back end and a solid front end, but I didn't really do anything that was super using solids traits. I don't even really know what solids traits are. I don't really know what either of these, what these frameworks offer over React. So I want to like look into that a little bit more and then pick one and then build out one or two projects with it so I can get an understanding and be like, do I really care? Should I move away from React? And my idea is I probably won't, but all of these sound like they have some pretty cool ideas. So I want to investigate more of them. I also want to learn a little bit more Rust um, because again, right now I have a pretty baseline knowledge and I pretty have pretty like base knowledge and I want to get a lot more information in my head. And one way to do that is just, again, build more projects, maybe do more advent of code problems, or just build out like a web server or two in Rust and see how that goes. I also want to learn more Go. Uh, again, Go, I really only use for like web servers. 
I know that there's a lot of cool, interesting things you can do with it, and I want to get really, really good at Go, and I also want to get really good at Rust, but obviously that'll take a little bit of time. But with Go, I bought these two books, uh, Building an Interpreter Go and Building a Compiler in Go. And since my syntax in Go is already pretty, like, I, I know my syntax, I know my way around Go pretty well. But going through these two books, I think, will give me both a better understanding of interpreters and compilers, and also just a better understanding of how to use Go nicely uh, when we get into some of the more complex topics. So I hope that happens, and hopefully it does. All right, Zig. Uh, I don't actually know if I want to learn Zig because I'm already learning Rust, but as far as I can tell, it's kind of like a spiritual successor to C or C++, where you can still like write memory unsafe code, but I've heard that it's really fun to write. And I think the only big project that I can think of that's being written in Zig is Bun, which is a, a JavaScript runtime, I think. But Zig seems cool. I, I looked at the syntax and it seems pretty similar to Rust. I think they follow like the pub function, whatever, like that syntax. So it seems pretty similar there, but it looks really interesting and I might try it out, but I'm not sure. I also want to learn a lot more about compilers. This might not be something that you've seen on other tech I want to learn in 2023 list because people really just want to do a lot of you know things that you can actually build. But I'm really interested in compilers and I won't actually learn about them in school because at Georgia Tech, we do threads. So we have, you, you pick two threads or two specializations in your computer science degree. And I've picked intelligence. So that'll cover like machine learning, deep learning, some computer vision and theory, which is like a lot of the mathematical aspects of it and like more advanced algorithm analysis and design. So I actually won't end up taking a class about compilers. And I'm kind of bummed about that because I'm interested in them, which is why I bought the book, uh, Building an Interpreter and Compiler in Go. And hopefully that'll teach me a little bit. And then after that, I can venture out into my own world and play around with it a little bit more and maybe even spend some time making my own language. Who knows? Like just as a little toy pet project. Who knows? We'll see if I have time. But I really do want to learn more about compilers. I also want to learn a lot more about how the internals of your operating system works. Again, because I won't be taking a class about operating systems and I feel like this would be a fun thing to know. So I will try and like take an online course or something where I learn more about operating systems. And of course, I will want to play around with a lot of machine learning stuff, maybe not run my own models, although that would be fun. And I, I, I know like PyTorch syntax, so I might as well spend some time trying to build a transformer from scratch. I know Andre Kaparthi has some really great YouTube videos out and Andre Kaparthi was the head of AI at Tesla until he resigned and now he's like making content on YouTube for free, which is awesome. So I wanna go check that out and also just play around with the OpenAI APIs. I have a project or, that I'm working on right now that I will be making a YouTube video about in some time in the next month. And I think it's a really cool project, it's really fun. So I'll make a video about that and OpenAI APIs are great. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to train the models. I don't have to fine tune the models. I just send a prompt. I get great stuff back and I'm ready to go and just, I don't know, enjoy my life. I can just spend time working on the front end, maybe doing some back end data processing, but OpenAI really does most of the work for me. All right, that's all the technology I wanna learn in 2023. This video actually ran over. It was a little bit longer than I thought, but I hope you guys enjoyed. If you wanna see more content like this, hit that like button, subscribe, Leave a comment. It would help me and the channel out a ton. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out.